good size snake head. Hey folks, it's uh, about 6 a.m. We're in Northeast Maryland getting ready to, to launch and do a little bit of tidal largemouth and snakehead fishing. Uh, I got Trey with Innovative Sportsman and Brian the Carpenter with me. Good and, morning. Uh, we're going we're gonna to launch, but before we do that, we're going to take a look at the two rigs. I've been working on this, uh, this John Boat build with the travel motor. Uh, we'll come back to that in just a second, but... Uh, we're going to look at the, the, uh, have you named this, this boat? This is the X24. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the cruise 2.0 on there. Trey, you got a rock guard to put on before we, we get going. Yep. It's uh, very similar to the 1103 rock guard. It's a clamp that fits around the profile of the motor. And then the second part is all aluminum, uh, with the gusset and, uh, of course, it's got the prongs for the rock guard and the grass blaster. So what we've got, like I said, it's very much like the 1103 rock guard. Uh, it's got your blade that comes down close to the prop. Uh, it keeps any vegetation from wrapping around right at your prop here. We get it close, but not too close because there is a little flex in these blades. Um, you got your gusset so that if you come up on a stump and you hit a stump, it allows that stump to just sweep off of it and not grab a hold of the head of the motor. And then you got your prongs so that whenever you go over a stump or some rocks, it'll deflect off of there and miss the prop. Nice. All right. Trey's going to pay the launch fee. Brian's going to give us a little walkthrough on his boat. So this is a Tracker PF-16. Uh, we started this project about a little over a year and a half ago and uh, finished it up this, this uh, uh, springtime or late winter. Basically, we gutted the entire boat, reframed it, redecked it, reran all the electric, plumbed a new live well in there, um, and filmed the whole thing put it on YouTube, it's on the Ike Live YouTube page, but we have glorious marine mat. This stuff is, I mean, it's wall-to-wall -wall carpet if you take a look. It, 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 the fit and finish on this thing came out really nice. And um, cool thing is, really cool, a couple of really cool features about the marine mat. Uh, it doesn't stain, it, it, you know, I've spilled liquid mayhem on there. Jeff, you know liquid mayhem, the, the red. red. Stuff is and the red came out. Yeah, the red turns your plastics pink. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but it, it comes out. The stuff cleans up really nice. It looks amazing. And if you're not catching them, it's a great place to take a nap. So it's uh, <laughs> it's boat was built for. Experience. Yes, yes. I, I, I plan on taking many naps this summer. Um, we have all kinds of TH Marine products in here. You see the hatches. Uh, i show you. This is... This is where all the business is happening. I've got three batteries in here for the uh, four treks, the 36 volt four treks on the front. And then we also have a house battery here with this TH Marine Hydra to keep things kind of separated and keep the electric neat. Um, a lot of weight, again, boat was built for comfort. And, uh, and we try to offset some of that comfort with the Torquedo on the back. We got the Cruise 2.0 sitting on a Atlas jack plate to get the heights right, and that that actually really helps. And uh, 
gets our speeds up there. So my John boat build is sort of in progress and, and really, Trey, when was it two days ago you, you put the, uh, the anchor boom on there? Yes, so two days ago. I have the anchor wizard here that lets that anchor down, uh, runs up through, you put this, um, this piece here and then the anchor boom. What the anchor boom does is as you're you're bringing this up, it, it brings that mushroom anchor topside so it doesn't swing and bang on the hull. Um, we still have to do put the flooring in. I know that um, I have some of the um, you know the flooring coming in. I know I'm going to use some foam, the kind of stuff that, that they use in the in kayaks for structural integrity that you put underneath the deck so that when you stand it doesn't it doesn't compress. Um, it's also going to be sound deadening and a little bit extra flotation. So yesterday all day I was at Yak Attack uh, with John Hipshire and we put track everywhere in this boat. Uh, we have it up front for the cleats, uh, the lock and load bases for my the, uh, the camera mounts. Um, I put one here on the side, a heavy duty one for my depth finder which I don't have with me today because I'm waiting on a um, a Dakota lithium battery coming and I've made a battery box for that. Um, lots of gear track and, and um, Yak Attack accessories. I have a uh, Omega Pro here and then an Omega rod holder here, two cup holders. Um, this, I have it kind of tucked in there in the cart, but this is basically this park and pole going through the Zuka tube is going to keep me locked onto a spot once I drop off with the anchor this jamming down into whatever I have underneath me is going to keep the boat in wind from swinging on that anchor line so kind of a dual um, you know dual anchor setup uh, to keep it from swinging um, I put the the bullwinkle rod stages back here to complement the the rod holders here, I do have a stand-up paddleboard paddle here, and then the um, you know the the holder for that as well. As we move back, I, we don't need it because it's already braid out. But I do have my 360 degree light here in a Yak Attack Busy Carbon Pro um, that I can stick right here on the end. I'm going to leave it off just because. You know, I, I really did all my rod storage down like this because I want to be able to go under some, some low-hanging branches and stuff and not worry about hitting stuff. So I will leave this down for now because it is light. So the steering on, on the tr uh, travel, I know this says on this side travel 1003. I actually have a, just a long shaft. This is the travel 1103 and I do have the, a very similar rock guard to what we had on uh, that you just put on the Cruise 2.0 tray. Um, he made this one as well with the grass blaster. I took this travel 1103 and had it on the water after being at Yak Attack yesterday uh, empty and I and I hit 6.5 miles per hour. So Ooh. I'm keeping this light um, Much like the inflatable that I have I want this thing to be able to go where there's wet mud. I want to want to be able to go shallow and Keeping things relatively lightweight is, is a big part of that. So uh, the steering temporarily is unfortunately this big PVC pipe. It's important for me to sit forward in an electric rig uh, just because it gets the nose down and it rides flat. Uh, Trey is gonna be working on a remote steering. I already have the remote throttle here, you know, with the Yak Tech Torquedo throttle mount. And uh, you know, this will get updated we got flooring to do and a couple other things, but it's it's a work in progress for now. But let's go get it on the water.
event for Mike Iaconelli's uh, kids charity. And expecting between 100 and 150 boats launching out of the northeast here. I would imagine if there's 100 boats, 99 of them are going to be glass fast boats with 125 to 250 horse. And there'll be one tin boat with a five horse electric torpedo on the back. <laughs> And that's going to be me. Um, so, it is possible to get them good up here in the northeast that time of year, uh, this time of year. And we're out here kind of doing a little scouting. There's a few things that I may be able to get into that the big guys can't. So, that's what today's about. We'll recon on some back water. And try to uh, do that David and Goliath thing. Frankenfish <laughs> in the live well. You want to put him in a live well? Do you want him? Yeah, I'll keep him. Oh. Sounds good. Little baby on the finesse jig. First fish of the day. He's teeny tiny. Nowhere to go but up. <laughs> See ya. First trip in the boat. First you know, I, I ran it last night just to get speed and range empty. But you didn't have rods. And no. It was funny. I was putting in, and there was like three different people on the way out were like, I was fishing. And I'm like, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was noodling. Got a rod in the boat? Nope. I mean, I guess I just looked the part, right? I mean, definitely. So this is something I was, I don't want to say concerned about, but curious about. Running full speed into about a one foot chop. It's doing all right. I'm taking a little bit of splash in, but it's not, it's not so good. Is what you're doing legal in tournament play? That's a good question. <laughs> All depends on the uh, tournament rules. Most probably not. Right. Especially since I'm casting. Hey, well, let's make it for the day. Yeah.
All right, so I've switched places with Trey. He's back there just to get some insight on uh, the rigging of that boat. You know, he's gonna put the stick steer in there and now I'm, uh, I'm on with Brian and he's flipping jigs at these pilings. That's right, we're gonna try to catch some bass. Got some snakeheads, got a big catfish. No bass yet today from that. Yeah? No good ones. I got two little ones. Yeah. We gotta get a good one. He's off. So, I just missed one. Skipping the dock with a finesse jig. Tapped it and went pop. But you know what this is about? This is like I'm, I'm sitting. You know why? No. I'm a kayaker. And, and I can't skip standing up. That's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> It's, it's what I'm used to, man. So I'm gonna sit uh, Indian style on the back deck and skip. That fish popped it good. It was, uh, yeah. I, I don't know how I- I threw up there and didn't get fish. I don't know if I you know, got in front of them or not. The thing I've gotten today, Z-Man finesse jig with that, that trick shots trailer. Just a real small jig. Size snakehead. Got the snakehead dial today. That's uh, <laughs> that's number three. Nice oh, man. Here, you want the net? Nah. Oh, look at his, look at his face. I think I'm gonna take one of these home. That dinner, if <laughs> if he likes you, that's totally what they did, man. They just they don't uh, no. stop fighting once they're in the boat. They don't cooperate. <laughs> so much for dinner. Just for eating McDonald's. <sighs> <laughs> he lives to fight another day. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one, Jeff. <laughs> he swallowed it, buddy. I thought for sure you'd stand up for that. <laughs> it's not how I catch fish, man. <laughs> this is crazy. There he is. Thank you. Oh my god, there was another one. I wonder what that was. That was I was going to help you grab the net, but I, I was kind of, you know, just caught up in the show. Like, what the hell is this going to play out? <laughs> stand. Is Jeff going to stand up? Nope. Jeff, stand up. Does his legs work? Kind of damn. How many different places have you had this this boat so far? How many different types of fisheries? Uh, mostly, mostly around my my uh, my area, South Jersey lakes, a lot of shallow ponds, average depth like three to five feet, muddy bottom, that type of stuff. Um, had it up to North Jersey, where you're more deep deep reservoirs, places that got a hundred foot of water at them. Super clear. 
uh, that kind of stuff. Today we're down here on the Chesapeake and fishing where, you know, Saturday, Saturday there'll be a 100 boat tournament, 100 boat bass boat tournament out here. Uh, and as you see, all this, all these kind of boats. Um, I've also I fished the Jersey Shore with it this year. Took it out, uh, did a little night striper fishing, and fished some inlets or a river type stuff. It's pretty cool fishing in current. How'd it do in the salt water? It did good. I mean, you know, I got to watch things like the wind. The wind report's super important. You know, I'm not making a long run, but it is, it's a pretty shallow boat to take out there, but. I've had guys that are really into um, testing and knowing their, their speeds with the Torquedo, mm -hmm. say that they always get their best speeds in salt water. Really? Because it's, yeah, it's a, a, a denser medium. Oh, okay. And the, the prop has a better bite on it. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't notice. It's interesting. So when you're when you're in this solo, what's your your top end speed? Six. What have you seen? Six point two. Six two. I might. I, th I think I've seen six three, but six two, six three. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I did before I added an extra battery. I was seeing six two and six three more regularly. Now I'm typically I have the boat's pretty heavy. It's, just, it's not a big boat. It's a 16 foot tracker, but it's fairly heavy. I've got in addition to the torpedo battery, which doesn't weigh a lot. I've got four Group 29s in here, three to run the 36 volt trolling motor, and then a house battery to run you know all the party stuff, the electronics, the lights, the radio, the live well. On the offhand chance we catch something in a tournament, so. Uh, so it's it's a heavy boat, you know. It's five total batteries in it. Probably a cat, right? <laughs> There's the spiral figure eight. There it is. And there it is. The catfish. <laughs> 